I managed to get my hands on the Librem 5 development kit, and boy, does it look great. Right out of the gate, I noticed a couple interesting things. First, the USB cable is purple. Not to be alone in the strange colors, the power brick is orange. So you get a purple USB and an orange power brick. Nice. Um, the power brick does have something interesting. It can change to various different voltages, like 12 volts or 5 volts, and that's kind of interesting. I've not seen that on a whole lot of power bricks. And the next thing that blew my mind is it's not actually like a phone board and a Librem 5 board. It's just one board. You can flip it over. One side's a screen, one side's like a bunch of things. <laughs> Processor heatsink. A really bitchy one. More on that later. Once we were satisfied gawking in all of the included hardware, we went ahead and plugged the device into a computer. In short order, a device called TTYACM0 showed up. We used PicoCom to connect to this device, and we were greeted with a wonderful Purism login screen. I used root root to log in, catted the release file, kind of poked about a bit, and it seemed good to go. From here, it was time to upgrade. So, we went ahead, downloaded the latest development scripts from Purism, and as well, we needed to install something called UUU, which I guess is required for the flashing process. I wasn't able to find this in the OpenSUSE repositories, but I believe it is at least in the Debian repositories. In my case, I had to compile from source, and there was like three or four library dependencies as well as things like GCC and GCC, C++ that needed to be installed in order for me to compile. Once compiled, I linked the file to slash user bin and switched the boot mode switch into USB and then I rebooted the device, ran the script, and it downloaded the latest build from their Jenkins server and flashed the device just fine. After that, we switched the device back into EMMC mode and rebooted it, grabbed my micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. Unfortunately, it had a right bend in it, which then blocked the USB-C port, which powers the device. So we were stuck with serial for the moment and needed to pick up additional parts. <laughs> but from serial console, we were able to tell that it did install the new OS. So naturally we check the temperature and notice it's getting really, really hot. Once it hit up around 56 degrees, we figured we should probably wait and put a fan on this, especially if you want to do anything a little bit more intensive on the device. So we put this on hold for the moment. We need to go ahead and get ourselves a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter that doesn't have a bend, as well as a fan, and a few other bits and bobs. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.